Welcome to the Draw Bit on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show an example of using dice rolls as part of an example of an adventure game. So what do I mean by all of that title? Well, I mean by often when we want to create some type of adventure setting or role-playing setting within Twine, we generally want to use dice rolls because the systems we're used to using also do the same. If you've used something like Dungeons and Dragons or Blades in the Dark, we often use dice to resolve conflict in some way. So in this example, we're going to do something pretty similar, but we're going to start with randomly assigning statistics and then using those statistics to check to see if certain outcomes happen or not. So let's start right here with a start passage. So I'm beginning right here with the link macro. I'm Remember, the link macro allows us to set up some link, and then once the reader or player clicks on the link, we can do something as a result. So we're using the set macro right here and story-wide variables, brain and brawn. And then here's the use, as we've seen previously, of the method random provided to us by Sugarcube. And so we have a minimum and a maximum, a 1 to 10 and 1 to 10. And these will set these two story-wide variables, brand and brawn, to some number 1 to 10. We're also right here using the replace macro, and we've gone over this in a previous video within this SugarCube series. And this is targeting right here an HTML element with the class attribute. That's what the period means. And so it's targeting this right here. So what all this means is when a reader or user clicks this link, it will set up these random numbers and then it will show what those random numbers are. So this gives the reader or player the ability to see what the numbers are before they start the adventure. So let's go ahead and look at adventure. In a pretty similar way, notice that we're using HTML right here, a division or a div element called lift right here with the ID of lift, and another link macro inside of this. In this case, attempt to lift door, brawl, ch 10, check. So similar to a skill check within Dungeons and Dragons or similar structure within Blades of the Dark system, we see right here, in which case get a temporary variable to right here, brawl, whatever the previous number was and start, plus a 1 to 20 roll, similar to a Dungeons and Dragons type system. And right here, if result was greater than 10, success. If it was less than 10, failure. Notice in each case right here, we're using the replace macro again to replace result results way down here in the bottom and the exact same thing using switch right here we've set this up right here using brain exact same thing brain plus random 1 to 20 if it's greater than 10 this if it's less than 10 this and replace switch each time so this replaces switch this replaces lift so once you do it you can't do it again so let's go ahead and play this and then we'll talk about it a little bit more so right here we have link macro click it Notice they replace an action where you're replacing right here and showing the corresponding random values. We keep clicking it. We'll just keep getting random values for each one until we have something that seems a little interesting. That seems seven and 10 is fine. Click adventure. And now we can attempt to do both of these. So if we attempt to lift the door, we got success. We attempt the secret switch, we got success again. Now, if we close this and rerun it, get different numbers, three and eight, uh, here we go, 10 and 1, so let's try Brawl, Success, Brain, Success. So based on whatever the 1 to 20 roll was, and then adding that to the existing statistic, in this case, Brain or Brawl, we could correspondingly do some type of skill check, or in a different example, use corresponding statistics to check a certain thing, or go a certain route, or show a certain branch within a story. We are using right here the central part of the random method provided by SugarCube. Again, random method needs a minimum and a maximum right here, 1 to 10. And then correspondingly, in the other passage, we had 1 to 20. In each case, again, getting some type of random number as part of this, combining it with some other number, and then generating some response. We're also seeing, of course, constantly use right here of the replace macro. And the reason why we're seeing this is because it can be really useful, especially combined with HTML, to show a reader or player what's happening within a story. Oftentimes, we can find ourselves in situations where we're generating numbers or doing something in the background and not exactly making it clear why we're doing something. Often, what we want to do is inform the reader or player about the progress. Here are your current statistics. 
here's what you're currently trying to do, and here's your corresponding possibility of success or failure. So we want to kind of always inform the reader or player about what they're doing, their chances of doing things, and give them a little bit more power about how they want to branch or approach particular things within a story. So each case here of the replace macro does that for us. And of course, we're using the random method, JavaScript behind the scenes, to do all of that as well. Looking at this example, we can create dice rolls. Not that hard by using the random method, minimum and maximum, combining that with our existing knowledge of how lots of other macros work. Looking at the link macro, set macro, if macro, and replace macros, particularly within this video on SugarCube 2.36. Thanks for watching.